India's most valued company, Reliance Industries Limited, or RIL, approved the demerger of its financial services arm in October last year. It got NCLT's green signal in July this year. Mining giant Vedanta Limited is looking to split into six companies. The restructuring is expected to be completed in 12 to 15 months. ITC is demerging its hotel business through the establishment of a wholly owned subsidiary, ITC Hotels Limited. And it is not just India Inc. giants. Smaller firms too are restructuring. The Competition Commission of India recently approved the proposed combination involving the demerger of the FMCG business of Haldiram Snacks and Haldiram Foods into Haldiram Snacks Food. Corporate India, it seems, is on a restructuring spree. It picked up pace during the third quarter of this financial year, translating into $32.9 billion worth of such deals. This was the highest quarterly total since the HDFC Bank-HDFC merger announced in second quarter of FY 2022. RIL's $18.4 billion split of its financial services arm, Geo Financial Services, is the largest deal involving an Indian company this year. The merger of IDFC Limited and IDFC First Bank and the demerger of Geo Financial Services accounted for more than 60% of the September quarter deal value of $32.9 billion. Of the largest five deals this year, five were announced post-July. Vedanta Limited became the latest corporate giant to join the restructuring bandwagon. Analysts said the reorganization was necessitated by the massive debt of the promoter entity Vedanta Resources Limited. Tata Steel, which is merging seven group companies with itself, has said the amalgamation will integrate the steel value chain and ensure a common face to market. Merger and demerger are critical tools for corporate restructuring. A demerger may be considered by a company when a business has uh, reached maturity or to discover value for shareholders, it may demerge and uh, list it on the bosses. Uh, a demerger may be considered to tackle debt problem when a conglomerate wants to apportion debt to each uh, of its businesses and uh, so that it can tackle debt. A merger, on the other hand, may be considered when uh, a company wants to simplify its corporate structure. It may want to uh, merge uh, different, uh, it may want to merge businesses in the same value chain. When independent pure play companies are established, they are valued better as opposed to a, a company which which has multiple businesses in it, the market would value it lesser than the sum of its parts, which is also known as a conglomerate discount. So to unlock value, it is, it is, uh, it is sort of preferred that separate businesses which are not related to each other are carved out into separate companies so that they can be valued better. Aided by the $57.8 billion merger of HDFC Bank and HDFC, India Inc. reported its highest ever mergers and acquisition in value terms in calendar year 2022 at $171 billion compared to deals worth $145 billion announced in 2021. Before 2021, the previous record was set in 2018 at $129 billion. Compared to 2018, the years 2019 and 2020 saw a fall in m and deals in value terms. The recent restructuring trend caught up after a dull pandemic period. Towards the end of 2021, a report by consulting firm Bain & Company said that the appetite of Indian companies for acquisitions had increased after COVID. The report had said that the acquisition activity was expected to continue. In 2022, the financial services sector accounted for the highest share in total M&A deals, valued at $69.4 billion. Meanwhile, the high-tech sector accounted for the highest deal volume, with its deal value totaling $18.6 billion. For instance, off late, you may have seen that in the airline sector, which is going through certain turmoil, you may see that you know certain airlines are demerging their cargo business because they want to attract the right set of investors for the right set of business. Okay, it is quintessential because now private capital that is available or the capital that is available in general 
is also sector specific in most cases. So in order to attract right capital for that particular sector, businesses are restructuring such that the shareholder finds better value, better valuation, and they, they have very focused management for developing that particular company or that particular vertical within the conglomerate. So that is why they keep doing it. And what the road ahead looks like. The Indian economy is on a high, so businesses are reaching maturity and uh, they may uh, consider demerging business. The stock market is at an elevated level. So there will be a propensity by companies to take advantage of this uh, buoyancy. Right now, post-COVID, we are seeing a lot of restructuring that is happening in the market in various sectors. But in my view, this building of efficiency and building and restructuring the businesses will always exist. It is not a phenomenon that is cyclical, but it's a phenomenon that is constant. This year may also see robust deal values and volumes being clogged as the profit of companies soars. But a lot will also depend on how the global economy performs. Mergers and demergers are usually driven by commercial needs. And as the economy grows, we will continue to see such restructurings. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. She's working her way to the corner office. Business Standard.